Kia ora, welcome to the Invisible Sensei podcast. This is a podcast about my experiences as a martial artist, as a student, as a teacher, as someone who from time to time has stubbed their toes on the problems of the world and kind of gone, what am I doing this for? Please take time to check out the link in the description. It will take you to our YouTube channel and also to our profiles on social media, which you're most welcome to check out and contact us on. We also have a wonderful merch shop where you can grab cups and a couple of other things if you're wanting to support the podcast. Or if you're wanting to support it more directly, we have a link that you can do that also. Either way, enjoy the podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in and keep training, keep smiling, keep enjoying, and most importantly, keep developing. Yep. No, but seriously, I think what I liked about it was that um, when I kind of broke it down, I went, because I, I usually listen to Apex, uh, Way the Fist and OKP when I'm training. And a lot of my ideas were in terms of what come from what I talk about, kind of are fed by what, what you guys talk about. And also what's really cool too is having, I guess, peer review in the sense that I can ring up, you know, call you guys and we can kind of just kick the ball around a little bit and say, I like this, maybe you can think about that. And, and that's really cool. Um, no, I mean, it was because I think what I got from it was that there was one where you were sitting there and you were just having some awamori and you were just sampling some awamori and just, you know, had a big week, you've done some training and you were sitting there and kind of, shooting the shit and I'm going, man, this is really cool, you know, and I could, we never met, but I felt, man, I can relate to this guy. And then when we met um, sort of all on, uh, you know, through Bujan TV, you know, it was really funny. I was got a little bit starstruck to be totally honest with you, because, you know, you, you kind of listen to people and you kind of, you associate things and I watch stuff off the YouTube channel, especially that interview with Del Hamby sensei, um, and just really liked that and went, man, this is really cool. And then you're, um, the one where you, the YouTube video where you went to the uh, the Shurero shop and you were preaching in your gear, that was all kind of, and I'm going, all right, he's, it's not just, I think what I get out of it too is that you should enjoy what you do, but you should also have some fun with it as well. And I get that from both yous. Um, yeah. But one of the things, and I'm interested to see what your thoughts are, is that I have had some really interesting interactions with, the people that I've interviewed. I mean, I've gotten some people on here that I like. I mean, there's so many people. My first interview was Pedro Bernardi Sensei, and I was still trying to figure out how to use Zoom um, and kind of get tee up the mics. And I didn't know that you could do diff different things with Zoom. So it was kind of, he he was really cool. He he really sort of just sort of stuck with it, even though I didn't know, really know what I was doing. Um, but I always enjoy it. For me, the interviewing is a lot of fun. But, and, and I don't... I don't know, it'd be interesting to see what you guys' um, methodology is. I don't, I interview people that I'm actually interested in, in the sense that I want to learn something more for my own training. Um, and sort of, I've been really lucky, people say, oh, you know, you're a good interviewer. No, I'm just really curious about how people train and what their story and things like that. Um, what, what's been sort of your, your guys' um, I guess highs and lows of of doing um, OKP interviewing or just in general. Um, for OKP, I'll say that yeah, the highs are, are meeting some really outstanding people uh, and learning more about them than I thought I ever would. You know, um, this and getting people to open up to you is kind of fun, right? I, it, uh, people are generally, for the most part, a little bit nervous, a little bit cautious, cautious about trying to tell their story, and they might think, well, who's going to want to listen to this? But but a lot of people do actually. And, and you always find something unique about individuals when you're interviewing them. Um, the downfall though, I will say, cause I, I, we, we talk about the fun side of it a lot, <laughs> but I also, I also want to talk about the not so fun side, because I think that we, we gloss over that. We'll complain to each other sometimes, but the, the not so fun side, a lot of times the editing, right. And um, trying because I think we all do this. We, when we, when we interview a subject, when we interview this human being, this, this person that might have their own dojo, or maybe one day they want to have their own dojo, maybe they're well known, maybe they're not. We try to make them look good. And, you know, I've had, I've had cameras turn off when I'm recording. I've had batteries die in microphones. Um, I've had just 
been inside concrete buildings when I've been trying to interview people. There's no sound absorption. And I'm, I don't think any of us are AV people. None of us have an audio video background. We're all literally doing this kind of learning from YouTube or, Hey, it didn't work that time. So let's try it differently this time. But, uh, I find that the editing side of things is, is very difficult. However, when you see the finished product, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's worth it. It's fun. But there's a, there is a lot more work that goes into it. I'm curious to get, you know, hear from you guys about that as well. If you, have you found any tricks? I know Michael, you're, you're getting ready to test some new software. Um, you've done some long form interviews. Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Oh yeah. Well, very similar overall. Um, because, you know, especially again, I, uh, for, for at least for apex, um, you know, again, I've only done two interviews and because I, I don't want, you know, that, like I said, the driving factor is not to become an interview podcast. Uh, there's a specific goal and a specific reason for why I interview the people that I interview. You know, you there's a couple people that, I, is it, is that one of the reasons no? you think you're better than me? Oh, and well, Josh? Is that one of the I mean, I saw what you guys did and it was like, if those jackasses <laughs> can do it, I can do it too. <laughs> But, and then but he convinced no, Jonathan I mean, too. Jonathan was like, Jonathan CB was like, no, 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 oh, no, 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 no. This has no, been going no, on no, for a no, couple no. years now. Okay. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's set the record straight. Let's set the record straight here for everybody. Okay. I wake up one morning late last year and I wake up to a text message. Hey, bro, we should totally start a podcast. And my response was, you know, I already have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is I've been telling Jonathan, like, I wanted Jonathan to do something to get on Bujin TV or whatever. I mean, the guy's a, a yeah. an amazing athlete. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, a ranked <laughs> WKF Kumite fighter, right? And yeah. perhaps Kata as well. I mean, he's just an all around great, great Karateka. And uh, I remember one day I sent him a text message just like over a year ago. Heck, it might have been around the same time now that I think of it, but I didn't know that he was contacting you. I sent him a message like, you got to start a podcast, man. You got to start doing stuff. And he actually responded, you must have been talking to Michael. Like, yeah, actually, I was, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So we'll talk so, bad about Jonathan since he's not here. Yeah, he's, he's not here. So, I mean, I'll probably hear about this later after this airs, but, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for Apex, you know, well, back to he that. He is one so, of those goad you guys. Yeah. <sighs> Goju, you. Goju, you. yeah. Well, guys, that's yeah. all the time we have for. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> so, but so for for when I when I interview people, you know, it's there's the there's the public face of of people that you see, you know, there's the especially because they're they're athletes, U.S. national team members, and, and things like that. So, for me, I want to get them to open up and tell kind of not so much their secrets, but you know what what drives them and how they how they improve their performance and, and things like that. So I try to steer the topic towards that. But similarly to, to, to what Josh said, the afterwards, the, that, the editing and the technical aspects are sometimes challenging, especially considering where, where all of my interviews have been remote. You know, I, I haven't been in a position to where I could sit down with people and have a face-to-face -face conversation. So you're working on, you know, not just, you know, my upload and download speeds, but, you know, figuring out how, what platform am I going to use to, to interview or, or to communicate with them and record, you know, just like you mentioned, you guys, you guys have lost audio and stuff from, from things like that and getting those files. And then whether they're, if they're, the audio isn't very good, or if there's a hiccup in the audio, then how do I fix that? And, and, and putting all that together. Um, yeah, like I, I, I've even, I, you know, Josh mentioned I got Final Cut Pro video editing software uh, a couple months ago. And to be honest, it's just, I haven't really done very much because it's been, it's pretty intimidating, right? You know, it's pretty intimidating. Just the, the technical aspects of it. Yeah, I'd like to think that, I'd like to think the memes. <laughs> uh, at the end, I will put on my it. QR code for my PayPal. My, my, yeah. you can, you can yeah. scan the QR code for my PayPal and you can send a donation to the APR. <laughs> Oh, yeah. uh, channel right and I are always Shameless thinking plug. about, geez, can somebody please buy a t-shirt so I can get an extra dollar and, and this guy's buying <laughs> Final Cut. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Why, way to, way nice. to lift that bar and bring down the tone of the interview, man. That was, that was cool. <laughs>
um, hey, I'm going to ask you guys a question. Do you guys have any questions for me? I mean, what's yeah. my, I can't yeah. see you guys being, you know, like you guys are my, you know, peer review. I mean, what's cool is you guys so often will tell me what I need to hear as opposed to what I want to hear, which, you know, hurts. But um, it's, it's, I think if anyone, if people like the podcast, I think sort of in terms of production used to a, a massive part. There are other people that I want to shout out to just really quickly. Um, you know, like, of course, there's my beautiful partner, Tawa Sensei, who's been on here. Uh, obviously, I don't call her Tawa Sensei at home, but she's a sensei, and her name is Tawa, um, who's hugely influential on everything I do and hugely supportive. Probably gets sick of me talking and definitely rolls her eyes and the three of us get together um, in a good-natured way. <laughs> um, hey, hey, Michael, remember yesterday when we were talking and he had to call her over? And kind of make her part of the conversation so she wouldn't yell at him. And he was like, oh, no, yeah, but because I'm talking, she's talking to, to those two I, idiots I, again. I'm talking to them about, like, we're going to do a collaboration. And yeah, yeah, come here. Yeah, yeah, remember that? And I did it with my yeah. voice that high, too. I did it with my voice It was. High, exactly. Much. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I noticed you were ducking a lot. Like, like was there something like you were going to get hit or something? She's got great kicks, man, and punches. So I it's bet. Like, and she's a really good grappler, too. So it's just kind of like, I'm going to get it. Here, you get that triangle there. but you know there's there's so many cool people that i am so thankful for in terms of the people who listen to this um you know you've got uh, my friends in canada you know um, people like um steve arms shehan um jeff mcdonald um you know all, my, all, all of you know all the people who listen to it in canada um i think i might have named all of them just then <laughs> You know, um, Sensei Bernardi, um, of course, you know, our mentor and Sensei, uh, Pat McGale, uh, gosh, PJ Broomey, um, all, all of the Bukai crowd in Australia, um, my, my bro Amarish over there in Sri Lanka, um, uh, Laura Lorenz, who's, who's kind of like um, my, in a weird kind of a way, sort of a bit of an editor in, in my um uh, karate buddy that I bounce a lot of ideas for themes and things like that off and I'm hoping to get her on the podcast soon. Um, there's so many people that I'm really thankful for um, and thankful to, um, especially you guys. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I just want to, as we go on, if you don't mind, I might just drop in as I think of people. If I haven't mentioned you, it's because I edited out the bit when I talked about you. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> Hey, can you tell us uh, tell us a little bit about who you have coming up? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, well, if there's well, anything confirmed, if you don't want to, that's fine. I mean, sure. Well, I'm just trying to fill got... time because I'm bored. But <laughs> cool, thanks, man. I've got uh, um, Sensei uh, Cesar Borkowski um, from um, Canada, from Toronto. Um, I did, managed to do an interview with him. It was really awesome. Um, really amazing martial arts and incredible history um, I, I became aware of him through Chris Wilson's excellent interview series Karate Masters um, a couple of years back and um, yeah had an opportunity through uh, Xi'an um, Arms to meet and, and conversate um, and yeah so he's coming up and there's a, a bunch of people of course yourself um, and maybe we'll get Michael on the return maybe we'll get Jonathan and Michael will return the favor man um, I think we should do some, that. I think that'd be a good some, one to get those two on. There's a few people that yeah. I want to that I want to capture, where, and um, but yeah, that's kind of who I've got coming up in, in the near. Got in the can, as they say, industry say. It's in the <laughs> and that's that's not that's not, not that that much, no. that's is not that what they say for me for me no, something no. to can that's what i did before no. this podcast <laughs> before this recording right now okay totally different okay. meaning okay so just so you know. This is your language. I'm just trying to use it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to use yeah. it. Actually, it, we perfected the language. The Americans perfected the English yeah, language. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I know. Hey, uh, I got a question for you, if you don't mind, about the people that you have interviewed. What has been maybe your, your funnest or most surprising person that you interviewed? Something like maybe you didn't expect the interview to go a certain way or, um, someone opened up more than you you thought or brought in a lot more information maybe you didn't know about sure. well i mean everyone brings something like i give an example i'll give an example sort of a scope right so you've got uh grand uh pearl sensei from the uk he's a gorgeous sensei and an incredible author so 
I was a bit of I was fanboying because I love his books. Um, he sent some incredible books um, uh, about Gojuru, um, A Sudden Dawn, which is really the story, really kind of a the story of Bodhidharma, but he's done it in a way that it's more, it reads more like a story as, as opposed to a history lesson. Um, he's done some incredible books, and I really encourage you to look. But being able to Wait, dig into... I got to stop there. What was that one called? Goran, Goran Powell. Um, uh, the name of the book? Um, a, a, a Sudden Dawn. Um, and there's some other ones. There's some really some wonderful ones. There's one that he talks... Where he does... He's created this, um, and, and the name escapes me at the moment, but I'll put a link in the in the description. Um, we're talking okay, because I'm just I'm just looking it up right now on my phone. I'm trying to trying to type that cool. in there. That's it's great. Sudden... That's great. It's 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 like a, a drink of knowledge, really. Um, yeah. Yeah. A sudden dawn. Oh, there it is, right on Amazon. If you're listening to this, it look, us, us two idiots are holding up our merch. To the camera. Oh, oh, you are? Oh, I was just, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just on, searching on my phone. <laughs> oh, okay. I was just searching on my phone and what? I'm just adding this to my, my shopping cart, a sudden dawn, 12 but, uh, paperback. Yeah. But he also just, so it was an interesting opportunity to really dig into how he wrote these books and what was behind them. Um, he's done books about, um, doing the 100 men committee and the 50 men committee and all this sort of stuff really really amazing writer and with an incredible life story actually um and so that was cool to be able to talk to him about it because i was fanboying on his book so i'd read his books before i'd you know and then somehow i was able to track him down and he was he was just incredible um people like rick hotton so rick hotton seems to you know sort of functions on this whole you know i'm not a short to come practitioner clearly um, but sort of, he just went off on this incredible kind of um, stream of consciousness through the interview, and I just went, "Wow, it was just kind of really, really interesting." But he had a great sense of humor as well, you know. Yeah, um, fantastic. So that was fantastic a really interesting fantastic one. interview. Um, that was a really fantastic interview you you did with him. Yeah. I was happy to see that. One, well, um, then there's in yeah, there. We we kind of always joke about this, but I always kind of <laughs> Joshua interviewed them. Um, first, and then I want to them right. Um, no, no, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. <laughs> it's okay, man. That's okay. No, I no, set them up. You knock them down. Plagiarism. Plagiarism. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we, we, we do have to. We do have to. Like, how many times has that happened, though? Actually, it's a few. Actually, it's it's a only few. like Actually, two or three. It's not that many. No, it's 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 enough. But what happens is. <laughs> Um, what I do is I then, then I, I, I give Josh shit about this, but then I call him and go, Hey, can you set up? Can you hey man, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to interview this person. I hope, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and then you've got people like Pat Miguel sensei and Pat Miguel sensei, you know, he's, he's, uh, uh okay, now I'm born and raised and also his dad is American. So that you get this incredible cultural lens of karate. Um, and then course, there's ones where I've had my own students like um, Kalima and Tawa, um, who, who just kind of talk about, have done this wonderful podcast regarding the woman's experience of practicing martial arts. Um, so I am always amazed by where people go. I think there's something in it, but you've got to really want to be listening to the story. Um, I, there's not a, not a single time that I've got, haven't got something out. The worst thing that's kind of happened where I put a, a, a friend of mine who has a fantastic, incredible karate pedigree and story, and I kind of badgered him and badgered him and badgered him to get on. And then we started recording, and I won't say his name for, for out of respect, but then he kind of just got, he was really shy. He just went, oh, look, I, I can't do this. And I, and I kind of pressured him into it, and he didn't probably didn't really want to do it, but he did it. As a, as a favor to me and I always felt really bad about that I mean you do this sort of stuff and you get talk, good at talking and, and interviewing and you forget that actually for a lot of people um, you know people are shy people are quite reserved and people don't want to talk about stuff people want to do and so um, that's probably the only low point um, it's always funny what well, one thing I one thing I do note is quite a few like when I talk to James Pankovich from my subtle door on Virgin TV, how much of a nerd James is, you know, he's a Star Wars nerd, you know, everyone's got these either 
see the Star Wars. Well, they've always got a little bit of a Star Wars going on. And not me. They've always got a great. Except for except for somebody. There's somebody we know here that just doesn't get any of the it's movie me. references. Yeah, it's me. I mean, you guys popping right these movie references too. off, and I'm like, whatever. I had people in Japan ask me, are you an American? Because I don't know anything about Star Wars. <laughs> Luke Skywalker? Yeah. All right, whatever. See? Yeah. As I've said. And that should tell you, you was... something. That should tell you something. Yeah. You should I be wish. ashamed of yourself. <laughs> well, I'm going to get really away from not. I don't know but how I'm you. Not. I don't know how your family bears the shame of your ignorance. But I've got a Cobra Kai t-shirt. Well, that's a start. Yeah. Well, you know, one thing that I really like about about it is that I mean, it's 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 kind of scary at first, like you said, trying even just approaching people, be willing to to take that to take that risk of contacting somebody and be you know, hey, can 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 you sit down with me and can can we talk and trying to get them to uh, you know tell their story, but it's kind of the same thing that I mean, we wouldn't be here today having this conversation if it, I mean, let's, to be honest, if it weren't for Josh starting his podcast, right? I mean, if you, you go back to, to, to mm, our don't conversation, make his, don't make with that guy's Josh, head any fatter than it already I know, is. I know, please. I know, but still, unfortunately it's the truth. Yeah. 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 You can't hide it. Yeah. Right. Because continue. You know, you when guys, I, you, when you, I, you guys typically yeah, go stop, 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 stop. Looking. Just, just, just let me continue. Let me, let me tell the, the story. The just looking, let me tell the story. The funniest, the smartest. No, yeah, continue. No, no, no. <laughs> but seriously, I found the Okinawa Karate Podcast because when I was in America, I had, I did have a, 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 a long commute. I spent a lot of time in the car and found the Okinawa Karate Podcast. Told Jonathan about it. Hey, man, you've got a long drive to the dojo. You need to go check this guy out. He's, you know, in Okinawa talking to all these people. Yeah, 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 whatever. Then to come to find out they had a relation. I mean, they had a connection based on where they used to live and grew up. And then, you know, Josh interviewed somebody that Jonathan knew. Then Jonathan got to Okinawa first. They made contact. They interviewed. Jonathan mentioned me. Josh messaged me like right after the interview was over. I went to Okinawa uh, in 2019, I think, fall of 2019 for the first time in a while met Josh, you know, we, we had some beers at the dojo bar, ended up with the crazy lady outside. 2020. Um, it was January, 2020. You were here for Chinese New Year's. Well, that was the second trip. That was the second. Okay. Trip. Yeah. The, the first one was 19 when we ended up outside the bar, uh, I think. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but then, you know, and then, and then Bujin started at the same time we met to our, all of this was, you know, and so my point for all of this is the community that you develop, when you interview when you're interviewing these people and the friendships that can come develop i mean hell this topic the karate community was the, the the topic of a thursday thoughts podcast episode that i did about building your karate community and that's one of the things that i really like um, about doing it even so that kind of gets past the the fear of you know fear of rejection if you will of what's this person going to say or are they going to be willing to sit down with me and and whatnot is because you make that connection and then the flip side of that is not just the people that you interview and I, you know, I don't know how, how you guys are, but you know, we've gotten a lot of really, uh, good feedback for our way of the fist podcast. Um, I've gotten, you know, uh, requests for topics. Hey, can you talk about, uh, can you talk about this topic? I've got, we got two that we're going to put into the, the next episode that we, we record. Um, hey, I, there's this dojo here that you guys mentioned this and uh, I, I saw this driving and these seem, these are really great people and um, you, maybe you should think about talking to them and stuff. And so your connections start to grow and that's one of the great things about karate that comes from, from this, doing the interviews, doing the podcasts and stuff like this is the ability to, to make those connections that you otherwise might not get.